Sorry, can people hear me? Uh, so remember to sign in on the attendees list if you haven't already. Uh, do we have anybody who'd like to take notes today? I'll take that. No, it shouldn't be Natalie every week. I'll take it this time. Awesome. And I don't think I see any new faces, so we'll jump right into release planning and updates. Uh, I guess I can give an update on the lifecycle side. Um, we're, we're, we're nearing completion of um, the issues in our milestone, but I actually put as a topic for today, just you know, to quickly kind of go over what is currently in platform 07, um, consequently being targeted for the next milestone on the life cycle and uh, some changes that, um, that make sense given the level of, of uncertainty around um, stack packs at the moment. So I, we could speak to that when we get to that part. Um, but suffice to say that we're hoping to cut a release, you know, when we can get clarity on that. I was muted, apologies. Uh, I could speak a little bit on the platform side for PAC. Um, it doesn't look like we have a lot of features uh, ready to be shipped out. So I think we're gonna need a little bit of uh, coordination or discussion in the um, platform, platform sub-team um, to determine you know, exactly what we're gonna try to release uh, given that our release is scheduled for next week. And so we should be going to feature complete um, this week. I know that there's been some discussions about report Tamil as a pretty, you know, a requested feature um, recently. So that might be something we might try to squeeze in and get out. Uh, I think that's it for us right now. Awesome. Any other sub team updates from distribution or learning? Going once, going twice. Seems like no. Uh, we'll jump right into our weekly RFC review. Wait one second to share my screen. Everybody see that? Cool. Uh, first thing is, looks like this is just depend bot. So moving on to add issues, generation as per, this isn't an RFC, right? This is just, some proposed changes so, or part of the automation. Uh, so the first one is remove shell specific logic. I did put this on the agenda for today so we can talk about it more later. Sounds great. I also put remove stacks on the agenda at the end. Um, and although I think this is gonna be a long discussion probably. <laughs> uh, the Next one is add proposal for shared layers directory. That's not on the agenda, I think. Uh, do we have Sam here? Or... He's out this week, so maybe we can right. skip over this this week. Sounds good. It's not an FCP or anything. No. OK, cool. Uh, make build layers read only. Another one for Sam. Should we also skip this one? Seems like it. Seems like there's not too much activity here recently. Uh, this one's blocked by. Blocked on the shell one that I have open now. So I'm going to ask Sam if we can close the other one. Sounds great. Combine and organize metadata file location. Somebody else picked this up. If it wasn't Sam. Yeah, yeah I, I picked that up. I should probably figure out how to make it look like it. Um, yeah, I pushed a change to the to the RFC. So uh, in every request for reviews, so when everyone gets a chance, no rush on this. Just take a look, and that's not it, by the way. Uh, it's just in the actual readable. It's an old comment. So. Got it. 
I think I remember there was some concern from somebody at some point about the, I mean, Emily, we talked about this a little bit about changing some things from what they are today. Yeah, I think there are some things that we can't change without creating compatibility yeah. issues, but I think Jesse has addressed that in the latest version, so it's ready for a re-review. Uh, yeah, yeah so, I may have missed something, but I think we're probably okay, hopefully. Awesome, that's great. So just looking for... Yeah, it takes time, review it. Yeah. Be on the thing. All right, and so that's our RFC review. We'll move on to a project descriptor. So um, let's see, I put this on the agenda based on some discussions that have been ongoing uh, about the future of project descriptor. Um, and just wanted to bring it up in this forum to see if we could either brainstorm a little bit, um, discuss it more in depth or simply just determine what the next steps should be um, because it does seem like there's there's some pretty big issues with the project descriptor that we'd wanna address um, sooner rather than later. So um, based on my recollection of, of what's been happening uh, in these discussions is we have concerns about how the platforms should incorporate and support the project descriptor. Um, so what, one of them um, is basically the portability aspect of Project uh, Tamil and what the expected output um, of independent platforms is when they don't support everything within the project descriptor, right? Um, so a, a very basic example would be PAC using the same project descriptor as something like KPAC and you know, certain parts of the project descriptor not being supported where the output image is not the right image, right? Or not the, the same image uh, in a sense, right? So think of um, something where build packs can't be imported on, let's say, KPAC for some reason, right? Um, and so you can't use build packs that are um, either inline build packs, right, that are coming up or something like that. And uh, so therefore that step is skipped. And so that build pack isn't executed and uh, the world just you know, continues to work. But the image that you get uh, on that platform that doesn't support something like inline build packs, uh, it just would behave differently um, unknowingly. Uh, we could dive into that a little bit further um, or I can go through the other kind of concerns that we have. For, so for that one is, I guess, are there cases where it's so like the case you described sounded like a case where it might actually should fail. Like if you have a project Tomel that's specifying some build pack it can't use, I would kind of expect KPAC not to ignore it and to fail. So are there other cases where it is more like uh, it, it shouldn't fail, it should actually do something, but it does a different thing? I know we've talked about Builder as another. Um, construct in the project descriptor. Uh, KPAC, my understanding is doesn't support builder uh, key parameter because the builders are built into the cluster. So the way that they are defined are, is very different. They're not pulling an image, they're being constructed in the cluster. But couldn't KPAC just fail if it sees project Toml and it, it's like the builders configured in a CRD instead of, you know, in the app directory in the case of KPAC, right? And so the, like if KPAC can read project Tomel, couldn't it see, hey, builder key is filled out. I can't do that and just refuse to build. Yes, and I guess that's the question is whether that's what we want, right? Because then if you think about, you know, what's the quote unquote value if PAC, if you have this file defined to be use it locally, but then you send it off to KPAC and KPAC is refusing to build your project because of this file. The portability yeah. is the output, right? And so if you can't actually deliver the same output, like we're not here to make sure that just because it built in one place, it will always build in another place. It's that it has to build exactly the same thing before. I have apprehensions about failing mostly because 
you know, there might be things that are convenient to do for your pack build that you could do in a different and valid way in KPAC. But now if you fill out this exact field, things are going to start failing, especially because it's an extension spec. Um, I don't know. That, that gives me pause. I mean, I think, I mean, I think it's pretty common to have like development configuration. So you could have a, I could see having a project TOML that's for local development and a project TOML that's for KPAC. Like that doesn't seem crazy to me where, you know, you would have like potentially, I mean, you'd name them differently, um, but that's, that's allowed. So you could just pass dash P or make project, uh, you know, make one the default or whatever, or, you know, explicitly define it on KPAC. I do believe that there was um, maybe, maybe a thought where certain configuration elements within the io.buildpacks domain were expected to always work, right? And work across all the platforms. And in those cases, you know, if it can't be supported for whatever reason, it should fail. But then anything that is maybe specific to, um, you know, let's say extension, right? Like the builder, that's an extension. That's not technically something required by platforms to support. Um, anything like that goes into a separate um, section, right? In which that case, it's more like quote unquote optional or specific to a platform, right? So you could have uh, configuration or options that are specific to PAC, configurations that are specific to KPAC, um, and those don't kind of interact together, right? But they've been isolated into uh, what's the term, like a subdomain, right? Um, within our project script or schema. But then everything within the core um, construct of IO build packs um, should be supported or, or functioning and that have a hard fail. I don't know if, if that provides the same idea that you're, you're bringing up, Joe, but I think the idea of two different files becomes a little bit harder to manage. I mean, I think having, defining your build packs in multiple places because different platforms work in different ways is also, I don't like, I think it's probably the same level of burden for the app developer. Um, so you're, you're saying builder should be Something like builder because it's an extension should be potentially in a different namespace in the file besides io.buildpacks or some some sub thing under that. That's my recollection of, of somebody proposed that I believe it was Sam, um, and I know he's definitely had some thoughts around this. So it's it's unfortunate that he's not here. But I don't think that it's, that it, uh, works well for buildpacks group because that's not an extension like builder, right? And that, but that's still a problem because KPAC won't honor your build packs group. I, I think I have a, maybe a similar opinion about some properties moving out of a, a core group within that project HTML file, uh, you know, it's something we kind of talked about previously in a lot of it could be implemented with a build pack that's optional. And so it's actually not builder that I'm concerned about. It's things like, you know, if you're setting environment variables, the way that works in KPAC is different and KPAC may want to provide more operational control over that. And so, but that's something that you could do with an extension build pack instead of kind of a core part of the platform. And so I, I think some of those things I would like to move out, but they're not, <laughs> they're not things like builder. I kind of think KPAC should add support for, you know, reading builder out of the app directory instead of, you know, us, us trying to work around that, you know, that's, that's not an option right now. Um, or like the, the domain model there is already complex for simple use cases. I think it's something I've been talking to be new about. Yeah. Um, and to be clear though, Stephen, like you're talking about k or sorry about k but effectively what you're saying is you're making some of these extension specifications, like um, you expect platforms to be able to support this feature. And if they don't, Project Toml no longer works as you'd expect it to. Well, Project Toml itself is an extension spec, right? So it, does that sure. but, but you're not required to like do all extension specs or none of the extension specs. If you pick and choose and you want to support Project Toml, 
the thing you just described there, where I want KPAC to actually support Builder in this way, means that you expect all platforms that choose to support Project Toml to support Builder as well. Like you're you're creating a dependency graph in the extension specs. Yeah, I think that was one of Sam's points early on, or not early on, but when he first brought this up was how much of uh, project descriptor is required when I say my platform supports the project descriptor extension. Maybe maybe not builder, maybe build packs then is a better example. Like sure, that field can be optional because it's another extension. Like the, I, I don't feel like it needs to move out of a core group of things in the file though. Doesn't bother me too much if an extension spec has an optional field that references another extension spec. That's guess, true, but like your justification that says, I want KPAC to support builders rather than trying to deal with this problem, like makes it not actually optional, right? It, 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 you, if you say the way we're going to get around the question of whether this should be a hard failure or a soft failure is by making a platform implement a thing, like let's use, you know, uh, some other platform that's out there, like Ben's personal platform. You're making the same expectation on that platform as well for, for the, to prevent the hard failure. Right. You're, you're saying you have to implement that. I don't think a platform should have to implement it. I think in KPAC's case specifically, I would like it if KPAC implemented builders, not, not we should force KPAC to implement builders through the specifications. Or, uh, you know. so, suppose it was suppose it was a piece of code that like we didn't have control of like Ben's personal platform. What should I do in that case? Should I have a hard failure? I feel like there's two categories of things that I imagine going in Project Toml, and one whole category could be easily implemented by like a build pack that has a contract with the file. It'd be very easy for platforms to include this build pack. It's like, you know, if you want to set process types or environment variables um, or labels, anything like that, it's like you can have a contract between a build pack and a file. And then all you have to do is include the build pack. And I feel like that's actually very clean and nice when you're talking about things that a build pack can't respect through the build pack API that are instead things that a, like a platform is configuring through the platform API. I just worry that like the exact same interface is not going to work for all platforms. Like there might be different caching options, different restrictions, different use cases. And I, I worry that like coupling all these things together in one table where we say this table is required doesn't give the flexibility you need there. So is there, so that's kind of the drawback for, for that proposal, right? What about the proposal of just providing multiple project descriptors, right? And then per platform, uh, I'm assuming each platform would have a way for you to specify where your project descriptor is located. I don't think users- Yeah, I mean, I can see. Good. Sorry. I, I don't think users would understand the difference between, like if you had one project descriptor that had your build packs in it and builders in it and another file that had your environment variables and other things in it. I don't, I don't know if users would understand. It feels like we're, it's like an architectural difference and it's, you know, really bleeding into the user interface to some extent. Like I, I can definitely see an advantage of having one file that works in, in the different contexts for fairly generic things. Do you have any sense about how many people actually define builds in project.tunnels? Have we done any kind of data gathering? It, it's a pretty, it's a newish concept. I forget what pack release shifted. The idea is, is just, we have kind of no, no file you can put in your app directory <laughs> to, you know, configure build packs. What's our, what's our best sure, guess? I, yeah. With the project.tunnel, I, I get it. Um, I have a separate thing I was going to bring up around that, but um, 
I wonder how many people actually are trying to define these builders in the first place. Like maybe it's really not that much of an issue. It's a very specialized issue for certain people. Oh, like like how many people are trying to define a builder? Or like the the list of build packs and the orderings. I see. Because that's the, that's the crux of the issue here, right? Between KPAC and PAC is that someone can provide a different list of the order of the build packs, and KPAC's not going to recognize it. Uh, even even just builder, right? Um, as a very you know simple example. If, if I have a builder defined in my project descriptor and run it with pack, and then I put this project on KPAC, but it's configured to use a different builder, then the outputs could very well be different, right? Hmm. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't understand that. I've never used these parts in any of my projects so far, so. And I think that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make them usable, because I think right now it, it's, Def difficult for me as a, a, you know, from the perspective of an end user to see the value when I can't have that portability or that expectation as I move it across different platforms within the ecosystem. So, so on our side, every user using build packs is using one, using cloud native build packs. And I think probably most commonly for ignore, exclude. And then, and then second to that, defining build packs. I don't think anybody's using it for builder. I do wonder, uh, going back a little bit, um, if something like the idea of profiles um, would be useful, some profiles with inheritance, adding complexity to, to how you define a project descriptor, right? But th that's what comes to my mind. I feel like that interface would be better than having multiple files, um, but I'm not entirely sure if the UX is like the best. None of the things we talked about feel very platform specific. Is my, it's like, it, it, it's just that platforms have different interfaces for accepting the same values right now. I, I, you know, I, I, I kind of think even if KPEX supports builders in, you know, an app directory eventually, it will probably be a flag to turn that off because a big part of KPEX is that, you know, optional operator control plane sort of part. I guess maybe when I think about what feels platform specific in it, like for pack, we've invented sort of this scheme of URIs, right? Where you can be like registry, blah, blah, blah. Like the way you specify build packs from different locations. And some of them are like from the local Docker daemon. Like some of these URIs don't even make sense in other platforms. Whereas in a platform like KPAC, like maybe you want to specify, you know, a reference to your Builder object, something like that. Builder resource. I think maybe we can park this for office hours. Or a one off meeting, it seems like there's a lot of discussion and stuff that probably needs to happen here. Uh, I know we're at half time. Yeah, and, and I don't want to take up, uh, let's see, okay, yeah, th there's definitely other points, but uh, I don't want to take up the majority of this meeting, um, especially where I think um, Sam could have a lot of input as well, so maybe it's, it's worth pushing it a, a little bit. All right, uh, we will move on to asset cash. Spirit of throwing up drafts earlier, I put up a draft of an RFC to create a writable cache for build packs to store assets, trying to solve a problem that people have been complaining about since the dawn of time, where when you're building multiple images, I mostly talk to Java users. They're like, why do I have to demo this JDK seven times when it's the same JDK? Um, we don't want to make our layer cache shared across images. There are a lot of good reasons not to do that, but I think there is a case where platforms might want to share you know, like structured, verifiable asset cache across images. Um, I'm proposing it being 
something that platforms can opt into um, and platforms can make a decision about how widely to share share a particular cache. So on PAC, I think because the Docker is sort of Docker Demons is sort of inherently single tenant, I think it makes sense to share the same cache across all builds. Uh, but other platforms can make different decisions or decide not to implement it at all in order to avoid cache poisoning or other concerns. So everyone, please take a look at that. Um, I think it's not done yet. It's still a draft, but I think it's readable enough that you can get the idea. Um, Sorry, can I have the nuance like explain to me about how this is uh, unique to Dan's asset packages, RFC and PR? So the asset packages RFC is about a way to vendor assets into a build pack image or a builder image. This is not that, but it uses sort of like a similar structure. So in addition to having CMB assets where you'd have vendored assets and it's not writable, you'd have another location that's CNB asset cache, where in a case where these things haven't been vendored in, it's a place where the build pack could download the asset and then it could be shared with other builds. Other builds. I'm implementing something like this for the Google build packs because uh, we run like in scaffold. So it's shared and uh, so user, we run on a per user basis. And so people generally want to share assets between different, uh, different builds and it makes a huge difference. Um, we're looking at doing it um, a bit more broadly so we can share assets that are downloaded like JDKs, but we're going to also uh, add support for like your, your Maven repository, sharing that in a, in a certain location that will be shared across the different uh, images as well. So it's not a fixed asset. Yeah, I think for things like Maven repository now, we've said that you can do that in PAC sort of like by mounting in to a known location. Um, so I haven't tried to solve those problems in this RFC, just tackling the asset stuff. But if you had ideas for how that all could be rolled together, you know, I'm curious. But I thought this was at least going to scope the problem down to the least controversial parts. <laughs> definitely, definitely. This is great. I, I think the cash poisoning or like the, I don't know if cash poisoning is even the right word. It's like, if you're not careful and you share, you're running a platform that has untrusted tenants and you share this cash between those untrusted tenants, really dangerous. <laughs> so the, because uh, app code can get executed during the build process, even if your build packs are controlled, you know? Um, so I, I think that's okay. As long as I just want to call out, you should be really clear in the RFC that should only be enabled for local builds with a single trusted tenant. And you shouldn't, even in that case, you shouldn't build source code that you don't trust locally and then build source code you do trust afterwards because, you know, I built this thing off the internet. Now I created a malicious version of the JDK. Now I'm going to build my, you know, production application. Oh, now <laughs> that's leaked into there. Like they're, they're definitely, uh, it worries me from a security perspective. They're, they're definitely platforms that have chosen to, you know, not implement this type of interaction anywhere because you know it, it like even at the cost of performance because it's a risk um doesn't mean we shouldn't do it i just want to you know feel obligated to say something <laughs> yeah i think we should add a bunch of caveats it should be optional and i think we should have a lot of strong recommendations for build packs using this like you shouldn't pull an asset out of the cache without double checking its digest stuff like that but i think because this is so structured it's not arbitrary build packs hopefully should be able to double check that whatever they're using is what they want is there i was gonna say like since we're using a, or we have a checksum right um couldn't we in some form or fashion, enforce that checksum uh, via the life cycle at some point. And so like mitigating the risk of mutation between builds, essentially. You could definitely implement something where either the platform itself or the life cycle goes and checks the integrity of everything in the cache. I don't think we want to build that into every build because it can be slow as death, but. 
I, I kind of like that almost that the build pack doesn't have to implement the logic to check the thing. Like just trust yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, if, if we're going to recommend that the build packs do it, why not the platform or life cycle do it? Or, or, you know, to your point, make it optional, right? And, you know, you could have a fast mode or trusted, just like we have trusted builders, the trusted version would essentially not check that, but the other one would. The performance really scares me because I see this asset cache sort of growing until someone clears it and the amount of time, like taking checksums is already the slowest part of our build process. If we're gonna go and take checksums of a bunch of large files, it's going to be too slow. Is there a way In to define, building. sorry, I was gonna say, is there a way to define or from a build pack to be able to define like what asset caches it's going to try to use so that only those are verified? You could, I just worry that you're going to start introducing a lot of complexity into the spec in order to try to do that. And I'm trying to remove complexity from the spec. <laughs> could you like check the cache at the end of a build and then, or like, is there a way you could hide the time because it doesn't necessarily have to happen immediately before the next build, as long as you're willing to like trust that the volume is coming back or nothing modified the volume in between builds or something like that. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Yeah. But like anything could modify the volume in between builds, right? right? Like, I don't know. That just seems like. It, it wouldn't be a great solution. <laughs> it seems like security theater at that point, right? Like I think build packs just need to, like a build pack can only pull something out of this asset cache. Like the way the structure is laid out, if the build pack knows the checksum of the thing it wants. So I think it then makes sense for the build pack to check whether that's true or not. Um, and since you can turn it off, like I'd rather just do this simple thing and then let platforms turn it off if they are uncomfortable with it. I wonder if it's untrusted. We have trusted and untrusted mode. I wonder if we make untrusted mode slower by validating the asset cache and then trusted mode is, is, runs without the asset cache validation. I like the, uh, I like the concept. I kind of wish lifecycle could do a bit more. Like I wish maybe we had like a CNB lifecycle downloader util or something that they use instead of curl. So that when they downloaded things, we could do some of this validation of like and caching based on like the URL requested from a build pack, like on the fly or something like that. Kind of like when you do a Docker ad where you have the URL, it'll download it or it'll give it to you if it already knows where it's at. So that we could have abstracted away like a little bit a little bit more, uh, but that sort of ties build packs to be uh, to using those helpers or whatever it is. I implemented that for pack file actually. It has a little binary that knows how to read the thing that looks like a build pack toml. And then yeah, it fixes the performance problem, right? Because you only have to deal, you deal with it only when they request it. Yeah. I think- You can it in, in the depends, right? So if you are in the, uh, in detect, so the build pack says, yes, I can, I can do this. And here I'd like these URLs and the lifecycle could take that, download it, and then. Yeah, we could do something more complicated with the build plan to make it safer. Um, See, I think the complexity that we're talking about trying to resolve, um, we should, maybe understand where that complexity lies. If we're trying to offset that complexity from ourselves or the implementation of, let's say, the, the life cycle onto the build pack authors, I feel like that's the wrong way to do it, right? Just because we don't want any um, complexity, we're, we're just asking them to do a whole bunch of stuff. But I think it should be kind of the inverse, like we should be doing more so that they don't have to. I guess the question is like, is the goal here to stop a build pack from doing the wrong thing? Like when we're asking for these features, is it like, so we can make this safer and have a security guarantee or is it to make build pack authors lives easier? Because yes, we could have these helpers in the life cycle and maybe we want to do that to make build pack authors lives easier. But I think the way our permissions model work, it wouldn't stop a build pack from doing the wrong thing. It just makes it easier to do the right thing. 
Um, and if it's more of a convenience than a guarantee, then I'd be inclined to say, let's, let's do this to begin with, especially because it's, you know, opt in and then, and then we could uh, add more conveniences later. Could you elaborate on the opt-in um, aspect of this? Uh, a platform can provide this writable cache location or it can not, right? So no one's going to be stuck with this insecure feature if they don't want it. So I imagine some platforms like large multi-tenant platforms just might not want to introduce this at all. But I think PAC should introduce it. Maybe PAC provides a way to turn it off for people who are uncomfortable with it, but. Yeah, hmm. then Tecton would introduce it and it would be a persistent volume essentially, right? Uh, I mean, only in the case that you're using Tecton to build a bunch of applications where it's okay if their build configuration can contaminate each other, right? It's like in a cloud platform in general, I'd imagine you maybe don't want to use this. I feel like maybe a thing you could do in Tecton is like you don't ever do this magically by default, but if I owned three apps and I say, please unite them with a the cache, then I can do it. Yeah. They could specify a persistent, uh, yeah, persistent volume. Like your, your PVC may not be that much faster than S3 <laughs> or whatever. Like that's uh, my experience. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost always slower. Um, so, I feel like the killer case here is for Pack and for like the Spring Boot Maven and Gradle plugins. Like people really want this, and I think we should let it happen. Downloading a 300 megabyte JDK is over and over and over again, especially because your first build fails is painful. I would actually say maybe Pack should opt out of this by default. So it's something that a user has to opt in. Uh, but we're, my plan is to enable it by default in Scaffold. So that people who are building a microservices type application will be able to share the JDK across that build. And I'm not sure about whether we want to create a, a separate Docker volume per like build location or whether we want to do it on a, the user basis. I think we'll probably do it in the user basis, but I need to think about how we're using Scaffold elsewhere. Are people using it on like in not multi-tenant environments, but in uh, like GCP, uh, Google Cloud build. I'm, I'm definitely supportive of this as, as it's specified uh, in the draft. If we can't think of an easy way to do that, to patch the security problems that doesn't hurt performance. And because we haven't, you know, doesn't, it seems unlikely that we'll come up with something like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not pushing back on it. I think whatever we did in terms of conveniences for build back authors or security guarantees, like the way this is laid out, could be layered on top of it. So like maybe we do more things later that make more platforms feel comfortable using it. But I think, I think we should do this now. I think the other point is that even if you enable it by default, unless a build pack's written, is written to use it, they'll never use it anyway. So there's, it, it really is an opt-in on both on the platform and on the build pack uh, authors. That's my number one concern with this. It seems like it would be easy for a build pack to accidentally bind itself to like, I guess, using this feature. Um, and if a platform doesn't have it, I guess lifecycle would, would fail gracefully, I guess, in that case, um, which is- Would it not just go into a, an ephemeral place that just doesn't cache over time? It, yeah, it probably would, like you said. I, I think it looks like it would be designed to fail, you know, fail slow, fail safe, which is fine. Uh, but I, I do kind of, the helpers, like if we're gonna introduce the helpers now, you'll have two ways to sort of maybe do this at the same, in a similar way where you're like, you know, downloading for, through the platform so that it can do intelligent caching and stuff like that. Uh, but I don't think the maybe. danger of bill packs depending on it is any worse than it is for asset packages. It's like we already have this optional sure. place where a bill pack could look for a vendored asset if it wants it. And now we have another place where it could look for a cached asset or put a cached asset if it wants it. But I feel like any build pack that's using these things is going to have to deal with the case where they don't exist. It just hardens my uh, idea for the helpers. Like, it's like if you're gonna have three different ways of like figuring out whether something already maybe exists in these optional places in every build pack, like 
we should probably be trying to solve that for the authors at some point. But I I like the idea. Are you part of back? Sorry. I, I didn't, didn't catch that. It sounded like it was a good joke, but I didn't hear it. <laughs> oh, I said, are you part of BAT, Jesse? The Build Pack Authors Tooling sub team? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, um, it, just on, on that topic of and now there are a whole bunch of places to check, I think it's worth calling out. This, this is like the fourth caching mechanism now. We have you know layers that can cache. Now we're talking about the build, the build read layer or the ability to write across shared layers between build packs. So it's like we have an individual build pack cache, we have a cross build pack cache, now we're going to have a cross image cache, and now we're going to have a cross everything that uses the same build pack cache and that with the asset caching, and they are all totally separate interfaces. Like maybe there's a little bit of similarity between the types of layers, but talking about those as different directories, there's this kind of similar asset thing in the last two, but those are, are still separate. Um, you know, if we're kind of said we want to tackle reducing complexity in the project, get rid of terms that are confusing for users, you know, kind of make build text do what they, they do best, you know, having four types of caching, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, <laughs> just um, does, does worry me a little bit. Yeah, I I had the same thoughts Stephen just brought up. Is like, we we already have a, another cache thing in flight, right? Uh, that Sam has the shared one um, across various build packs around build. Um, and I feel like we we've kind of been on this whole thing of like trying to reduce complexity and stuff. I hear what you're saying, but I'd rather reduce complexity somewhere else. I feel like this is the thing that people have been complaining to me about vociferously for years. You know? Oh, I'm not like I, yeah. I'm in the similar boat of Steven. Like I'm not, I don't want to block the feature. I wonder if there's a way we can uh because I, I think there's also additional complexity on the build pack of it, right? Like here's yet another thing, like. Oh, please learn about the four ways you can store stuff uh, through build pack. Um, like, I'm very much in favor of the feature. Just, I wonder if there's a way we can do it without making it as complex for the build pack author. But could asset packages prehydrate this cache with read-only root-owned files that, you know, follow the same thing and then add more things to that thing and then there's just one type of you know assets thing it's hard so um we looked at uh the asset uh cache and we're trying to think about how to adopt it but you know so one of the things that we have within uh app engine is uh historically we've um people didn't like that we had a restricted platform you know you had to run this jdk and you run this version so we're much more open now. So we download the latest versions by default of, you know, whether it's Python or the JDK or, or whatever. And so pre-hydrating all these registry asset cache uh, descriptors is kind of problematic. We can do it for some of the major versions, but we want to, we don't want to box people in. Um, so, and we also don't want to download like three different versions of the JDK for Java 11, Java 8, and maybe Java 15, right? Because that's just a one gig that we're going to be downloading over and over again. So we kind of prefer to do it on demand based on what the user wants. Yeah, to me, like the asset packages are more about, you, you kind of already have the bits installed in your cluster because you're doing air gap builds and things like that. Like it's, it's not something that needs to get downloaded. Whereas like asset caching is more about like, you know, that, that's not the situation. <laughs> you, you don't have things prehydrated. It, it's not free to recover the bits, right? Um, but I, I wonder if if you combine the two ideas together and then are careful with the permissions between the two, you know, does that, you know, give you a thing where, yeah, build packs can download whatever they want and share them with other build packs. And, you know, if you have prehydrated cache that's coming from your images, yep, that can show up there as well. And then it's one, you know, only, only one more type of, of caching and the type of caching is, you know, generally felt to be cross image caching, you know, even if some of, some of the cache can go further than that, right? Um, and then 
you know, if the build read layers thing is a little more like the other layers thing, then maybe it's only two kinds of caching sort of. <laughs> I feel like you need two locations though. Like if you want to build things into the image and have a shared volume, they can't be the same directory, right? But I think because we're laying the same directories out, hopefully it's still like a single concept. And then if we wanna make it easier for build pack authors, like, you know, now that we're promoting these things in the spec, like before I would have implemented this in lib pack and it would just work for all the Java build packs. Uh, if we're moving this up in the spec, you know, maybe we can put it in lib CMB and then anyone using those bindings will get it. And, you know, maybe the build pack author tooling provides a batch script that does the same thing. Like, I don't know if we need to solve this in the life cycle, if we solve it with build pack author tooling that makes it easier. I'm, I'm always a little bit skeptical of like, make the API complex and then solve it on the client side. <laughs> but the, you know, I think that definitely reduces complexity for those users. Um, but back to the like, do they have to be separate directories? Could you just symlink, create root own symlinks, you know, between the uh, image based asset cache SHAs into the shared asset cache when that mode is enabled? And then, then when the mode's enabled, the directory is writable. And when it's not, the directory is read only at the top level, something like that. Maybe the difference in how we're thinking about this is like how we think about complexity. Like all of that sounds more complex to me. Like I think many simple things is simpler than one complicated thing. And then you can build abstractions on top of it that unite them. From the build pack author perspective, it's like two different directories you have to check that are in the same format that have different behavior in different cases versus here's one directory. Um, you don't have to care where the things came from in that directory. You just have to know here are assets, right? And sometimes if the platform allows you to, you can write assets into that as well, right? That that seems definitively simpler to me from the build pack author's perspective, although certainly not from an implementation perspective on the lifecycle side. <laughs> you know, if we you know, have to create sim links that are owned by a particular user, you know, um, but maybe and there. like sometimes it's writable, sometimes it isn't. There's more like things you have to check rather than it exists. I can use it. One element of complexity from uh, an implementation side is actually we're requiring SHA two fifty sixes, and some of the downloads that we we request, we don't actually have a SHA two fifty six. It's either a SHA one sometimes. It's a SHA five twelve. I've seen once. And so now I've got to recompute values. And so in, in, in my implementation, we're just using the build pack ID and the build pack version and creating a directory under there and stashing things under a, a known name from that point. Since we're the ones downloading anyways, we're not really that worried about the cache poisoning side. Interesting. I wonder if, could you have one environment variable that can have multiple paths in it? They're colon separated. It's like, you're supposed to check these in this order for assets. Would that be simpler than having two environment variables for the two specific kinds of things? So in terms of the tooling that I'm providing like within our team, it's what Emily's describing. We have like a, a library and we've got a download and there's a download and extract. You provide the URL that we want to download from an optional hash and a directory where you want uh, the file that you want, no, the directory for extract. Uh, so, because we can be extracting to a layer, and we'll in that library we look at the the various places, and otherwise we download it. So it's all hidden away from the build pack author. Build pack authors don't have to do any of this, right? It's not necessary complexity; it's optional complexity. I just realized we have five minutes left and we got uh, two, three more agenda items. Do we want to keep talking about this for five more minutes or should, I guess, Emily, did you want to do a quick remove shell logic? Thing? They're both yours, so. Oh yeah, let's do remove shell logic quickly. 
Um, I just want to plug everyone to look at this RFC uh, to remove bash specific logic from the platform, from the lifecycle itself. Uh, we've talked about this in working groups before. What I'm proposing here is that every process is direct. Um, and that if you want a shell, you have to explicitly include bash in your process. Um, I think it will make it easier for folks to understand what is happening because there aren't as many cases of special logic. In order to do this, we need to remove profile script support from the lifecycle because profiles are inherently bashy and we've come up with a you know command prompt version of profiles but I feel like this already creates surprises for users where like my dot profile you know happens to work if my build pack created a shell process um, but it doesn't if that same process moves to being a direct process I think right now we're putting there's a lot of complexity in our process execution and that complexity leaks out to users and we should remove it. So I'd like everyone to read the RFC and give your thoughts. Uh, we support a CNB shim for V2 to CNB. I'm wondering uh, just hypothetically, what would it look like to shim something in like this? Would you think we could create like an exec D to like wrap these profile scripts? Is that kind of how something like this might just like high level work? Yeah, I think it'd be pretty easy to create a wrapper around any profile script that makes it implement the exec D interface. And then I think, you know, we can more, rather than having these implicit dependencies on bash, any build pack that's, you know, either wrapping a user provided profile script in an exec D or, you know, creating an exec D that is bash based can then declare a dependency on bash rather than sort of having it be this implicit feature of the lifecycle that, you know, sometimes doesn't even work because the stack image doesn't have bash on it. I guess I'm wondering with this one, as opposed to the last RFC, right? Uh, you were saying that the Java folks are complaining to you vociferously about it. I guess I'm wondering, I, you know, I, I understand what's going on here because I'm wondering if you're getting the same pressure to just to have, you know, the full picture around this one. Um, on the Java side, we actually already moved all of our processes to be direct uh, because we got complaints about some of the weird argument handling if you're using a shell process. Like the first complaint we got was that you needed a way to append additional arguments. Um, we solved that well for direct processes and with some hackery for shell processes and people, turns out that hackery was too clever and people don't like it. So we moved all of those things to be direct because whenever someone encountered a shell process that worked like this, they were confused by it. So I think we should just take it out. From a security standpoint, being able to build images without a shell is a great boon as well. Um, so I think if I if I understand, you're proposing though to still do environment variable replacement in direct process. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's the one thing, the one convenience that people really need. And I'm proposing a very uh, simple version of it. It's like kind of bash like notation, but with no nothing fancy other than you know, if you have a dollar and curly braces, we will replace the thing before running it. So kind of similar to what Kubernetes does. I, at first, I wanted to use the parentheses notation that Kubernetes does, but I realized that actually doesn't play well if you're running in Kubernetes because it will get replaced too soon. Right. I, mean, I guess because the envirs are not in the manifest. Then. Yeah. And yeah, also I Kubernetes think. doesn't replace based on envirs in the config, only ones that are in the um, in the env section of the pod spec. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. I meant, yeah. 
but then build packs, you know, dynamically modify those things. And we want the dynamic modified version to be the thing we, we populate. So I think we have to evaluate last. We might need a slightly different notation if we want a process that explicitly includes bash dash c to be able to use bash your notation. So that might be something to think about if someone had a different suggestion for our notation there. And with that, I think we are at time. I have to run. Thank you all for listening to me ramble about my RFCs. Have a good day.